What's up? How's everybody doing tonight? First things first, tell me what y'all think about the intro and how do I sound? I'm working off a brand new laptop and I just had to throw together all the settings uh, necessary to do the, the live stream. So I have no clue um, how I sound right now. <coughs> Does it sound the same, better, or worse? Audio is just a touch low. I think I can improve that. Let's see what that does. And I'm going to check something else. I am going to be concerned how everything sounds when I um, break. That's going to be my most most concern. So I obviously don't want to uh, break anybody's eardrums. Ooh, this might help. Okay, let's see if that helps a little bit. <coughs> and then we'll probably just... We'll probably just leave it like that. So, how is everybody doing? Let me try to go quickly run down the list and see who we got in here. Uh, Jimmy Beasley, uh, Repented Heart Daily. We got my man Roopster in the house. Always the first person to usually like my new videos when I put them out. Don Parrish, Rick Ward, Bryant from Corner 4 Billiards. What's going on, man? Kristen, John Knight, uh, GM Park UG, Level Man. Nishant, Super JS, Seth White. I see my man Jim from Bang Time Pool is up in here. I got the whole crew. <clears throat> this is awesome. So uh, first thing I want to do is give a huge shout out to Darren from Mr. Edit One. Uh, he is the guy that helped me um, build that intro that y'all saw that basically will be beginning my live streams. He gave me the basic template of what you saw in the background with the music playing, and then I added my uh, picture on top of it along with the, uh, the timer countdown. And I do plan on adding uh, some more stuff uh, so that it's just a little bit more animated uh, during the, uh, the wait time as people start to gather into the room. Um, but Mr. Edit One has a YouTube channel, so if you check the... Uh, description box below, you'll see a link to his YouTube channel. So do me a favor and go give him a like and a subscribe. And he also does, um, I wouldn't say freelance work, but he does help us out in the uh, the pool community by creating like little intros and thumbnails and stuff like that because he is a professional um, video slash photo editor. Uh, so you can obviously try to hit him up uh, maybe for some work. Uh, Tristan Knudsen, thank you so much for the 199 uh, super sticker. I really do appreciate that. <clears throat> but like I said before, if y'all saw the thumbnail to this video, I am working with a brand new laptop. My 10-year-old MacBook is being retired uh, from streaming. Uh, so this new laptop that I got here will be used for all my live streams. Um, and I can do some video editing on this laptop uh, as well because what I used to do is I would record everything out here and then I have to take all the video footage back to my office and do all the editing uh, in there. So I'm constantly going back and forth between my garage and my office. Now with this new laptop, I don't have to do that anymore. I can just record um, my clips here, drop them onto the uh, laptop, do all the editing and just stay um, in my garage while I'm trying to actually um, put together a video. So that's going to be very, very convenient uh, for me to be able to do. So I'm definitely looking forward to that. But most of my like um, pool coaching lesson videos or like any of my APA um, pool league matches, which um, I plan on uh, trying to release the next one 
um, this coming weekend. Um, you'll actually get to see me play up against another Super 7. So that should be uh, pretty exciting for, for everybody to watch and see what the, uh, the conclusion uh, of that match is going to be. But like I said, hopefully I get that out um, this weekend. At least that's going to be my next uh, recorded video that I put out. <coughs> Well, Tristan, what I know I plan on doing right now is because I, I still don't have a very um, good setup here. Um, if you're familiar with any of my old videos, you usually see like two bar tables um, or high top tables on one side of my um, pool table. Well, I've got one of them right here that's actually sitting, uh, that my laptop is actually sitting on. And I'm eventually going to um, have a buddy of mine build me a nice table that'll actually um, cover over my little mini fridge that I actually have that's right next to it, plus my, um, my diamond ball washer. And that table will be like a complete like studio setup to where I can have both my new laptop and my old laptop. And the reason why I want my old laptop in here too is because sometimes if I want to record multiple angles from the two that I have, I I've only done it once, which is a, is a side view uh, angle and then the front view angle. And so Instead of using actual camcorders, which I do have, I can now probably use my webcams and record them straight to the computers, um, which I think is going to be really convenient. Um, and then still just do all the editing rather than having them on uh, SD cards and then transferring them from the camcorder to the computer, back to the camcorder, et cetera, et cetera. So like I said, I'm, I'm hoping to achieve a lot more convenience when it comes to uh, creating YouTube's content, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Hey Alvin, what's going on? I'll send you. I'll send you the specs. It, 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 this is just a um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like a stock laptop uh, that I that I got off of uh, Amazon. I didn't I didn't custom build it or anything. And actually, I, I think it's a little bit. It's a it's a tad bit more powerful than my actual desktop uh, that I actually have in my office. <clears throat> but you know what? Enough of the talk. Y'all came here to see me play some pool. So let's go ahead and give the first rack a try, um, like I've done before. For anybody that's new to this, I'm going to be playing the Nine Ball Ghost, and I'm going to be following Bang Time Pool's um, Virtual Nine Ball Ghost tournament rules. So I can break a rack of Nine Ball, and I have to satisfy the three-point rule, which is to get three object balls to touch the head string from where I'm breaking from. If I at least make a ball on the break, that's one less ball that has to touch the head string. And then uh, as long as I satisfy the three-point rule, um, I can either take ball in hand or not take ball in hand. If I take ball in hand and try to run the table, I can score up to a maximum of nine points. If I don't take ball in hand and I'm able to run the table, then I can possibly score up to 11 points. And then if I don't run the table, I only get the, the, uh, the points for the balls that I have pocket. Um, if I don't satisfy the three-point rule on my break, I get one more chance to try to break. And if I don't satisfy it again, then I just get a zero uh, for the rack. Uh, right now, uh, I think uh, Jim just, Bang Time Pool just recently finished his third virtual tournament. And we had two players that came so very close to either tying or breaking my record of 68. I think they, they both basically got a 67. They were just... They were just uh, two points away from being able to break my record and only one point away from uh, tying the record. But last I remember, because it's been such a long time since I did a live stream, my personal best um, at this is 72. Someone correct me if I'm wrong uh, on that. And that was when I, I tried to still land between 81 and 99, 81 meaning that I, out of all nine racks, I scored nothing but nines, and then 99, I scored nothing but 11s. You're probably not going to see a 99 uh, tonight, but if I could do some sort of mixture of nines and 11s, then I can land somewhere between 81 and 99. So that's pretty much what I'm going to try to do here. I usually last about, you know, two to three hours of live streaming, so we might get to see, uh, you know, anywhere from like five to seven attempts at nine racks. Because after every attempt, um, I'll take a small break and then come and chit-chat with everybody. So, if there are no questions, we are going to begin. Somebody please give me a pattern. So in the chat, type the numbers 1 through 9, 
put the one in the front, put the nine in the middle, and then the other numbers anywhere you want, and that is the rack uh, that I'm gonna use for these first nine racks. Tim Z, you got a 73 as your personal best? That's awesome. All right, John Knight, I see your pattern. You are first. Sorry, Roopster, he beat you. All right, let's see here. Let's switch over to this. So one, five, eight. Four nine two six seven three. Let's try one five eight four nine two six seven three. So if anybody's seen my previous live streams, you know I'm going to be walking back and forth because I'm not going to be able to remember these patterns. One five eight. Four nine two six seven three. Okay, I have that correct. <coughs> so the first thing I'm actually going to do before I really get started, um, actually, haha, <laughs> before I really get started, I'm pretty sure everybody wants to see this. Here is the Tuxedo SP Revo One. I have the same 12.9 Revo shaft on this one so I can actually interchange this um, with my Predator Black 4.5. I just absolutely wanted to have this cue after seeing it uh, for the first time and now what I'm pretty much going to do is just use it for um, all of my YouTube videos and then still use my um, Predator Black uh, for when I go out. So real quick, uh, the first thing I'm going to do before I really get started is I'm going to break and I want every, I'm going to go check on the check, so I want everybody to let me know, like, how does it sound? Does the brake sound, like, too loud or something so I can try to toggle um, my microphone? Okay, so I made the standard wing ball into the corner pocket. The one, three, and the four crossed uh, the head string, so that's perfectly fine. That's the three-point rule. Uh, so, okay, the mic issues, that I, uh, that's most likely going to happen whenever I go over there. That has been a very common thing uh, that has happened. I think that has to do with distance uh, between the, um, the transmitter and the receiver. There's probably nothing I can do about that unless, of course, I get some, you know, higher, higher end um, stuff. But it sounds like the brake sounded good. Okay, cool. As long as I'm not breaking anybody's eardrums. So y'all see I have position on the one ball, so I am going to attempt to go for an 11 by not taking ball in hand. <clears throat> Actually, I already don't even like the position that I got here. wrong direction. One little mistake I've already made is that um, I've just freshly cleaned everything, the table, the balls, and everything else, and I actually should have hit them a couple of times just to kind of dirty them back up.
And we're off to a really good start. Let's see how many times I can actually put that together. So y'all should see on the left-hand side is a scoreboard. Basically, as I update the score, you'll see that the total down below will uh, continue to accumulate itself. I believe it was 673. Yep, that's correct. All right. Now, there has always been a trend on my previous streams where I'll start off like really good and then it just starts to go downhill from there. So hopefully I don't repeat that. But I probably just jinxed myself just from just from saying that. <clears throat> okay, looks like I made two on the break. Both the one and the five popped over the head string. And I mean obviously I can see the one ball. But let's go ahead and play it a little safe. Take ball in hand. We'll try to go for a nine on this one. Goodness gracious. Just keep on rolling. <coughs> a little farther than I would have liked. So you can see I have four balls left on the table. So that gives me a score of five for that rack. Didn't play the best of position from the four to the five. But having that 11 in that first rack gives me a little bit of a buffer because when you think about it, I'm only two points behind now. And two nines would be an 18, and I'm currently sitting at 16. That's why I want to have some of these 11s in my score. Okay, so when you look at that, I made a ball. It's only the three ball across the head string, so this is not a good break. I will try one more time. And in the past, what I would normally do is if I couldn't score between 81 through 99, I would pretty much just end the set. But then I had a lot of people uh, wanted me to at least keep trying to 
break my old record. So I'm kind of going to try to do both. If I see that I can't um, score between 81 through 99, but I, can, I still have my record, then I'll keep uh, doing the set. But once I can't do either, then I'm pretty much just going to end and take a break. Okay, satisfactory break, but our three ball pretty much ruins this rack. And even the six ball is not in the, the greatest of locations. I kind of wanted to see if I can get into a carom position, but this ain't going to cut it. Um, let's see here. I might get lucky in two different ways. I can try to shoot the three into the rail, have it come off the four. The three might go into that corner, or I might be able to make it um, make the four ball into the corner pocket. Or get neither. I'm actually surprised that the three stood still like that going into the rail. <clears throat> One, two, three, four, five, six. Always consider the first set a warm up set. Get all the bad shots out of the way. See if we can recover. Okay, scratch on the break is not really a penalty. It just means that I have to take ball in hand, and I'm only going to be able to score a nine. Don't really like how the six ball ended up. So if I really want to capitalize on being able to score a nine, I have to probably try to move it out of the way and still maintain some sort of position. So that's what I'm going to attempt to do. I'm going to see if I can pocket the one ball in the side pocket, push the cue ball up to break the nine out. Or I'm sorry, break the six out. Doesn't cut it. It's in a better position to be to be banked, maybe. Oh, goodness gracious. Three again. Where does that put me? Four, five, fifty-five, seventy-seven. If I do all elevens, <clears throat> all right. So at the very least, I need the six ball to not get tied up with that nine ball over. Which is actually kind of odd because I don't recall getting spreads like that hardly ever. That's 
a better spread. You can try for an 11 on this one. Very little cue ball movement required for this type of pattern. You just need to not make a careless mistake. Oh, like that. Wow. All right. All right. We still got an 11 out of that one, though. With a miscue. Uh, let's see, what's my next one? What would four nines get me? 36? Ha, I would end with the 69 if I got four, uh, four remaining nines. Another break like that, huh? Yuck. So I made two balls on the break. The eight ball made it. But the one ball didn't. All it has to do is touch the head string. But since I made two balls on the break, the eight ball makes the um, break satisfactory. All right, so can I not have a shot, like, at all? I don't. <laughs> of, of all the silliness, I don't have a shot. I'm going to try to play a combo. I missed it. Oh, my goodness. <coughs> I think that pretty much does it for the first round. Right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Can I only need two? Three, four, six, seven. Yeah, because I made two on the break. Duh. So 33 would only be 68. Yeah. Yeesh. That was a bit rough. My goodness. But you know what? It's starting to get warm in here. <coughs> See if we can cool it off. Okie doke. Let's see here. What am I coming back to? Hey, what's going on, Eric? Thanks for stopping by. Yeah, if I if I attempt to finish it, but like I said, if I if I can't beat a 72, I'm just going to go ahead and take a break. Uh, 
eventually it starts to get to a point where it's like, if, if I do attempt to go for um, a 99, like, you know, the very first rack has to be an 11. So it's like I wouldn't even, um, I wouldn't even uh, start keeping score until my first rack was an 11. <clears throat> oh, really? Their autofocus was on? Um, okay, let me see if I can fix that. Turn off autofocus. So that, that hopefully should not happen again. Let me check and see if this one has it also. Okay, th this camera does not. The face cam does not. So there. Hopefully um, the, uh, the um, pool table view uh, won't uh, focus in and out anymore. I just, I just turned off uh, autofocus. Uh, Jamie uh, Doc Hutch, yes, this is OBS. If you actually look at the thumb, if the thumbnail is actually visible, because I know th uh, YouTube thumbnails can actually be small, because you know it's, it is a picture of my laptop, but on the desktop uh, of the laptop is OBS. That's that's what I do use uh, to create all of this. So like the scoreboard that you see, um, let me just switch back to this. The scoreboard that you see here on the left side, that is just uh, Google Sheets. I have that opened on uh, Google Chrome uh, in a in a separate window, and I just capture that as a window capture. I make all the cells uh, green so that way I can green screen them out and make the make the scoreboard look like that. And then all I have is just multiple uh, camera inputs. So my, my new laptop has a, um, a webcam right up here on the bridge. Um, I have the front facing cam uh, that you see and I also have a uh, side facing cam. <clears throat> hey Ron Johnson, my fellow IT man. Yeah, so fortunately, setting, thing, setting everything back up was, uh, was pretty seamless. Uh, this headset, though, this is the uh, USB headset. This is not the same headset uh, that I was using um, in our Discord server. Because that, that one plugs straight into the uh, microphone jack. This, this headset is via USB with a uh, transmitter and a uh, receiver. But does anybody have any questions, comments, or concerns? While I cool off, I always enjoy talking to everybody and seeing what everybody's doing, uh, what everybody's been up to. Are y'all ready for the weekend? Uh, yeah, Jamie. So scoreboards can can practically be anything, really, when you think about it. You can you can create um, some sort of generic um, JPEG or a PNG with the so that way you can have a transparent background. Um, and the image can just be of anything, right? And you place the image anywhere you want in your um, OBS uh, scene, and then you can either grab uh, one or more text files uh, to create your, uh, to hold like your scores, um, uh, players' names if you need them or whatever, and then just place them wherever they need to be placed on the, uh, the image that you're going to be using as a scoreboard. I mean, I, I didn't build a scoreboard for this. You know, like I said, it's just, it's, it's literally just a spreadsheet. Um, that I'm using uh, just to keep track, uh, keep track of scores, so that way uh, that total you see is just a simple formula that you can use in like you know Excel or something to calculate um, all the scores together. Hey Tristan, what cue did you get? John, it's not time for, uh, for me to shave. I do have to clean up my neck, though. I don't really like having the, the neck fuzz here. <clears throat> uh, Tim Z, from time to time, I do try playing um, without uh, my Revo shaft. I have my uh, Sean STL-17 and a Viking uh, VM-8. Uh, those just have their standard um, wooden uh, wooden shafts on them. I still play with those uh, from time to time. Jimmy Beasley, you're saying as a two, I'm, I'm assuming that's an APA rating. 
um, in nine ball, what's a realistic score? Um, let's see here. I mean, if you're a two out of nine racks, see, so you see that bank time says 27 to uh, 27 to 36. Um, I think that's a little forgiving. I don't want to. I don't want to sound insulting. I do believe twenty-seven um, is possible uh, for you, because if you're at least using a magic rack, um, and and you break like how you see me break, you're guaranteed to at least make one, and that would be the wing ball, depending upon what side uh, that you're breaking from. And let's say that you always take. Uh, let's say that you always take ball in hand, so that should be at least guaranteeing you two. Um, and then depending upon where that second ball is. You know, hopefully you don't have to do any cue ball movements um, in order to get from the first ball to the second ball. So you have a possibility of three, and then a small possibility of four. Because once you get to that, once you get to that third ball, it's probably going to require you to actually move the cue ball to get from the third ball to the fourth ball. Um, and as a skill level two, I'm certainly not saying that it's not possible, but I would think the likelihood is rather low. So I would probably put you somewhere between maybe I would probably say somewhere between 24 and 30 would probably be um, an okay score um, for a uh, skill level two because that's basically you know strategically trying to score the points if you're trying to score points then it's going to be lower than you think but if you just actually realize to yourself that hey I can always make one because I'm going to make one on the break I'm always going to make two because I'm going to take cue ball in hand, and then hopefully I'm going to make three because going from the first shot, uh, first ball that I shoot to the second one will, will uh, require very little movement or no movement at all, because um, you can just play, hopefully play a stop shot and then just go for the and then just go for the third ball. But then that fourth ball is going to be a, a, a little trouble. I think it's going to be a little troublesome. Um, you can certainly get it, and of course you can you can get more than four. Um, I'm just thinking of the likelihood um, that uh, that can actually happen. A Q Tech 99275? What in the world is that? Let's have a look. Oh, is it from the, is this the uh, Prestige series? Uh, what color is that? That looks like, um, that, look, that looks like somewhere between blue and green. Oh, and it's coming with, the, or if, if you got all the, the stock stuff that comes with it, it comes with the Tiger Everest uh, tip, so that's pretty good. I haven't really heard any complaints about uh, Tiger Everest. I've actually put on a couple of Tiger Everest uh, tips uh, for some people. <clears throat> okay, guys, break's over. Give me another uh, pattern to try. Hopefully I can do a... Um, a much better score than what I did. Why is my DC not running? Oh, that's why. Um, it helps if I put the. Uh, <laughs> it helps if I turn my mini split onto the uh, uh, the correct mode. <laughs> Tristan, that's that's not a valid pattern. You got to put the nine somewhere in the middle. Uh, John, yes, I do have a uh, a cue late. Um, well, let me see here. I don't know if I can do this without messing something up. Let's see if I can just turn my table. I mean, there's part of it right there. So, like, here's the stuff here, motor, et cetera, et cetera. <coughs> Because I do um, replace tips um, for my um, local players uh, here in my area. I've been I've been learning. 
getting, um, I've been getting a whole lot more comfortable um, w uh, with uh, replacing some tips. Brake tips uh, still give me a little bit of trouble because those are actually um, harder to, uh, um, to cut. Uh, but I mean, it's, it's doable. Uh, let's see, AJ, I see a pattern from you. What do we got here? One, seven, three, six, nine, two, five, eight, four. Let's see what that one does for me. And let's see if we can obviously uh, perform better um, as well. Okay. One, seven, three, six, nine, two. You might actually start hearing uh, my mini split uh, in the background as it starts to cool off in here. Let's see, one, seven, three, six, nine, two. So two balls in the same spot. That's going to be the ball that I drop on the break most of the time. And then five, eight, four. Four ball hopefully will bank off of the short rail and then head down table with the one ball. All right. Let's definitely try to do better than last time. So we stuck with the trend, right? You now I started that first set, uh, first rack was an 11, and then everything just went downhill after that, right? I think that's pretty much how like all of my live streams um, have been, and hopefully I get hopefully I get better over time. Okay, got to start with an, possibly a nine. We can't shoot that. little bit of a tricky pattern considering where the six and the seven are. Oh, goodness gracious. That was one of those ones I thought I missed right when I hit it. Okay, let's see, the eight ball looks like it's in my way for one route. Oh, goodness gracious, and I, st and I still hit the eight ball. Let's see if the, the six and the seven separate like that again. There was one break that I was toying around with um, before I cleaned everything. I don't know if I'm going to use it tonight. Right now, I'm just trying to do pretty much like, quote unquote, the, the perfect break where the one ball comes right here and satisfies um, one of the points. The four ball would be the other ball that satisfies the other point. Um, and then the uh, two ball falling is the third point. enough. So the one ball the one ball doesn't make it. I need to hit slightly harder. I 
And I'm never going to remember this pattern. 746 times 3. Eight four. This is actually a whole lot easier to do if I didn't have to worry about the um, the three point rules. Because I have I have a break where I can get position on the one ball a pretty good percentage of the time. That works. Two balls on the break. Four ball is crossed. And we won't take ball in hand. Should we hit that hard enough to where we don't get hooked behind the seven? Oh, crap. That's what I get for not putting enough draw. And taking that shot for granted, no less. There we go. Good recovery. We can put, <laughs> we can put that eight ball on a, on a on a highlight reel. Woo! Okay, that's a reversal of the last set. I had an eleven and a five. Now I have a five and eleven. Same break. It's supposed, it's supposed to be just all muscle memory. Same power, same hit, blah, blah, blah. Get different results. Maybe on the, the next set, I'll do the, um, the other break uh, that I was talking about. Because I, I do constantly experiment with different types of breaks under different uh, conditions. One ball would have rolled a little bit more. Don't like the six ball.
ครับbig movement oh goodness gracious <laughs> Far behind am I? Six, six points behind. Everybody's ready for the weekend. I know I am. That's the week that I've had at work. Yeesh. Do not want the one ball to fall off the break. It doesn't guarantee me anything. I will try for an 11, though. Past the eight. Might be able to try to break it out from here. We'll see. Far so good. Oh my goodness. Okay. Whew. Not the prettiest of positions right now to do. Overcut it. Ah, oh, goodness gracious. It's actually not bad. I felt okay about that one. Has anybody tried the break and run with your jump cue challenge that's been going around? I know Jim's done it. 
Russian Crush uh, Gaming has done it. Eric Cool Guy Simpson uh, has done it, and, and I've done it so far. Has anybody else tried it? wasn't back here like this. And I will go for an 11 on this one. Ooh, okay. Oh, golly. What do we got left? Got to get four 11s. Yeah, okay. Let's go ahead and try to use the break that I was talking about. And we'll continue using it. Right now, I'm not doing very good. So the break that I'm talking about is more of a cut break. I'm still going to make the, uh, the wing ball. The one ball should be missing right around here, and it's going to bounce its way over here, and I don't want it to fall. Um, so I'm, I'm definitely going to get the one ball to um, end up uh, past the head string. The two ball is going to come over hopefully to the side rail and then back out towards the middle of the table, maybe even somewhere over here for position on the one, and hopefully the, the four ball still behaves as well and gets back here. Oh, but I missed the wing ball. You see, here's the one ball, like I said. But I didn't satisfy. Actually, that would have been good if I actually would have um, made the wing ball. That would have been perfect. I'm not entirely sure why the wing ball did not drop. But this should give you an idea of how often I actually experiment with different types of breaks when I can predict where the balls are going to go, at least from a magic rack. Because if I was using a regular rack um, and, there's, and there's accidental gaps inside of the rack, there's probably no telling where the balls would actually go. But at least with the magic rack, it's a little bit more predictable. an 11 on this one. This tuxedo doesn't have the, um, the special butt to use the um, extension uh, that I have. I was supposed to do with the four ball last time. <laughs> but I missed.
don't really like the sound of the cue ball very well now. And that's loud. Goodness gracious. Only be a seventy. Blech. Okay, let's see. Uh, Richard Statton, you're asking about the next Bang Time uh, tournament. Uh, hopefully he's answered that as I'm scrolling through. I do know that there is supposed to be like some sort of exhibition match uh, tomorrow. Uh, so that should be pretty exciting to watch. Oh, and Jim, you got your new tip uh, put on your break cue? And it was pretty funny on that short video that you did where the, the tip uh, flew off. Yeah, Roopster, I mean, it, it, you know, everybody has those nights where it, it gets kind of tough. Like I said, hopefully I, I start to get better um, as, I, as I go along. We just have to wait and see. Like I said, I'm going to try um, a different break to see if I can um, have a better chance at getting um, position on the one ball. Uh, but my whole concept is to always try to go for an 11, and that's usually what's, what screws me up unless I actually try to actively practice um, getting it. I, I have a couple of breaks where I can have position on the one ball. Just the probability of them are not as high as I'd like them to be because the power and the hit on the rack has to be, like, perfect. Um, and I, I can't, I can't um, reproduce it um, as often as I'd like. Uh, 2505, Carl, I mean, you have a point. Why don't I try to make the one ball um, on the break and make the wing ball so I'm always playing seven ball? The problem with that is uh, not knowing where the first lowest ball is going to be. So it really uh, ends up being more towards luck that I can actually score an 11. I can certainly try the strategy that you're talking about if I want to just score nothing but nines. But my main intent is to score a couple of 11s because that allows me to have a buffer uh, to where I can score, you know, sevens and eights um, and still be okay. Because as long as I um, land anywhere between 81 and 99, like that's at least like my first goal uh, to try to do. Since I've already scored a 72, I mean, I'm only missing nine more balls just to be able to do like a, a perfect um, 81. Um, or, or I shouldn't say perfect 81, but at least have a total of 81. Uh, but that's the main reason why. I never want the one ball to drop. Uh, on the break, because more times than not, I have an idea of where it's going to end up. Um, I just have to make sure that my power um, is correct and where I strike the rack, because that's going to really determine where my cue ball is going to end up in order to have position um, on the one ball. So, for example, if I didn't care about the if I didn't care about the three point rule, I'm going to throw up a rack. If I didn't care about the three-point rule, this was basically the break that I figured out uh, when I was playing in Bang Time Pool's um, second virtual tournament because he wasn't using the three-point rule. And it was, it was so much easier um, to get position on the, on the one ball after the break. So what I can do here is just strike head-on with a little bit of topspin See, I have position on the one ball. That's the break that I pretty much used um, during the, the second uh, bank uh, pool tournament, virtual pool tournament. This break doesn't satisfy the three-point rule. So a lot of the times uh, during my matches, I was going for 11s left and right, and sometimes I got them and sometimes I didn't get them. Uh, but that's why. So now that I have to satisfy the three-point rule, 
sometimes what I can do is get that one ball to just dribble towards the head string and score that point. And then, like I said, the wing ball is the second point, and then the ball that's in the back of the rack ends up being the third point if it can actually bank off the short rail and head, and head down table. But that's, it's, it's not a consistent result. And the harder I start to break, the more likely the balls are going to clutter back up. And that's the last thing that I want to happen. I think you saw during, um, I think it was it during uh, set one or two, I couldn't remember, where the six and the nine uh, were tying up to where I had to do some sort of combination. And doing an early combination in, in this format is not good because I'm only going to get two points uh, for scoring the nine and the balls that I've, and, and plus the balls that I've pocketed. The balls that are still on the table aren't going to count uh, towards my score. So that's my entire strategy at being able to try to produce like a really high score that lands somewhere between 81 and 99. Like I said, if I didn't care about the three point rule, then I'd break just like I should. And like pretty much go for an 11 like every every single solitary time. Now that doesn't mean I'm going to get it every single solitary time. I mean, I'm, I'm barely even getting nines right now as it, as it stands. <clears throat> uh, Jimmy Beasley, if you're scratching, you're cutting the, the one ball too much. Uh, so you're, you pretty much should be hitting the one ball square from the uh, angle um, at which you're lined up at. There is a cut break that you could do. I'm actually going to try to do it uh, during, uh, during this next set that I'm going to do. Uh, but that requires um, a little bit of bottom and a little bit of left uh, spin on the cue ball. So that way you get the cue ball to hit the side rail and then spin back towards the, um, towards the head string so it'll have position on the one ball. Uh, Dylan Quinton, how much different would my score change if I put the nine on the spot? I've played a couple of times with the nine ball on the spot. That is a very unpredictable rack. Um, and I, I, I currently do not have it down to where I can consistently make the wing ball because the wing ball is still makeable um, on the break provided that you do a cut break. And you have to hit the crap out of that rack. I've tried control breaks and everything else. Um, and I can barely get balls to pass the, the side pocket. Um, so when I actually hit the break really hard, I can satisfy the, the three-point rule, but then getting a ball to drop on the break, um, I, I just don't have that down yet. It makes it, it makes it a whole lot harder. But you know, as long as I satisfy the three-point rule, and everybody can say what I'm about to say, right? And I'm actually on, <laughs> then my, my score sh uh, shouldn't really be like that much different. But one thing that y'all um, should be seeing, though, is that the, the pattern um, that the, the balls were racked um, plays a pretty good factor um, in, in the run out. There's actually like a couple of patterns that I'm very, very, very familiar with um, that I can, um, the percentage of me being able to complete them is rather high. These random patterns that I'm getting, I've, I've never practiced uh, with them before. So the balls are ending up in different locations. So I'm having to play different transitions that I'm uh, usually not used to. Um, but it's not like it's any excuse. I should still be able to execute. But you know, w when you know that when you use the same rack over and over and over and you're just familiar with where the balls are going to go, you're always the likelihood of you playing the same transition during each rack is rather high. So therefore, you're like almost always doing the same thing. Therefore, your chances of being successful is just a little bit higher. This makes it a little bit more random, let alone a little bit more challenging. Uh, Dylan, we do that uh, here too in the, in the states. Uh, they do play with the uh, the nine ball uh, on the spot. Not a lot of places do it, but uh, for for some of the for some of the pros, uh, they usually do some heads up matches where the nine ball is actually on the spot. Because it, it's either that or they play ten ball, one one or the other. <clears throat> but let's try this again. What do you say? Someone give me a pattern, and I'm gonna I'm gonna try a different uh, break style. And hopefully put up a hopefully put up a better score. Hey, Mr. Hicks. We haven't seen you in a month of Sunday. How are you doing? Any 
Anybody have a pattern they'd like me to try? Okay, John, you see your pattern here? Let's have a look. One, seven, four, eight, nine, three, two, five, six. At some point in time, I figured like I'll eventually just buckle and try not to do, um, and and just try to take you know ball in hands and just do nothing but nines. Or attempt to do nothing but nines. That's that's a better way of saying it. Okay. So, as I said, now I'm going to do a little bit more of a cut break than a head-on break. So I'm trying to get the one ball to land somewhere down here. I'm going to want to make the wing ball and then get another ball to um, pass the head string to satisfy the three-point rule. So on this one, I do have a little bit of bottom and a little bit of left. Even on that one, it didn't uh, meet the uh, the three point rule. Because of where the one ball went, I think that means I'm cutting it too much. Four. Hit this a little fuller. Goodness gracious, didn't even make the wing ball. But I at least satisfied the three point rule. And <laughs> here I was thinking that I tried to hit it a little bit fuller, and clearly I didn't if the cue ball ended up where it, where it ended up. Oh my goodness, this will actually be a very clever rack to run if I can run it. down, cue ball. Overbanked it. Gee whiz. Okay. One, seven. Oh, 
three. Two, five, six, rotate. The pattern of the rack does matter because if I were to break um, without the correct pattern, um, I would get penalized uh, for that. We actually did have that happen uh, during the, uh, the last tournament. There's the setup I'm looking for. I just got to make sure I make a ball. So it's awfully odd that I'm not making a wing ball. Even with even with the cut break, because with the magic rack, the um, the approach angle is supposed to be very forgivable at making um, the wing ball. I still didn't make it. So that's actually a zero. I think that's the first zero I've done. Maybe this isn't going to be a good break to use. The other break that I had um, in my back pocket. That actually I did almost land between 81 and 99. Is to do this. One ball will come over here then hit this rail, and then still park itself somewhere right around here, because this is more with a head-on break, again, just like before, except I do have to deliver power uh, into this one, which means that I might end up with some clutters, too. But considering what, we're, what we've been getting, I don't think we have much of a choice. See what I mean? And then looks like Looks like the two balls okay. Oh, but it doesn't matter if I can't make the one ball. That's actually what I did on the attempt where I almost um, did it, where I almost landed between 81 and 99. I was on the, the final rack. <clears throat> and I had to go for an 11 on the final rack. And I had similar similar position, except it was more on this side of the table, and I, un and I just undercut the one ball. I think this is what we're going to do for the remainder of the night. Just break like this. Hope that there's really absolutely no clutters. Actually, that doesn't help if that happens. Oops. All right. Don't have much of a choice but to take ball in hand on this one.
that so badly. Oh, I would have not touched that nine ball. I think I would have been okay. Right pocket. Almost. <laughs> And with that, let's just start back over. That's ridiculous. I'll still use the same pattern. Oh, I can remember the pattern. Eight, nine. So this is fortunate, I said, not wanting that one ball to drop, but I do have position on the two. Now if I can just actually shoot like I know what I'm doing. Oh, goodness gracious. Okay, man, all that gloominess and finally I get a decent rack. Whew. Now, let's just keep that momentum going. That's not bad. Two balls in my way, isn't it? Yep. Take. Make an attempt at a nine on this one.
little bit straighter in. I don't have to move the cue ball so much. Oh my goodness. Oh, and it still fell. Whew. Okay. Man. All right. Well, at least I, that's the first one I've done two racks in a row now. So that's a good. See if we can make it three, though. Ready? Man, lots of work down here. Four balls, all kinds of tied up. <laughs> I'm actually hitting the bar table that's behind me. Man, I do not have a lot of wiggle room here for this four ball, let alone the four to the five. That's not going to cut it. Nope. Oh, man. Even if I even if I make this, the likelihood of me getting position on that five is not good. <laughs> but at least these gym mats are serving their purpose now. I was happy that I installed those. That's just three. more comforting on my feet. I'm actually able to play a lot longer. All right. Okay, 
Man, that's a little better. Go down, cue ball. Come on. A little bit straighter than I would have liked. There we go. Okay. Now that was actually a pretty good break. Now the only problem is going to be is if I can actually replicate that break. then we can actually do something. Starting to starting to build some consistency here. Oh, that was so dangerous. I cannot believe I put that much spin on it. That is not the position I intended on. Wow. It's supposed to be like somewhere over here. Oh, you all know what? I played position for the seven ball. <laughs> Luckily, the six ball is right there. Man, talk about a lapse in judgment. Holy cow. I'm not even sure what to do here because I fell short on the position. I think I scratched if I tried to try to go two rails to come around for the eight. Can't really spin the ball. So I'll risk running into the nine. That works. <sighs> no, 
All right, we got a little momentum going. Whew. Let's see if we can keep that up. Here's an interesting question for y'all. You know, eventually I want to get to a point to where I'm, I'm actually commentating like the entire time uh, that I'm playing. I've already learned that I have a hard enough time doing that uh, during a live stream. That's why I'm not really talking so much while I'm shooting. Uh, but should there be some like background music um, during my live stream? Just very faint. Let me know what y'all think about that. Just something uh, easy listening. That was luck. Wasn't supposed to even touch the four ball. Oh, crap. I took that one for granted. <sighs> Man. I rushed. Of all the silliness, I rushed that one. Okay, what are we looking at here? If I can get three elevens, that would be an eighty-six. Man, that's that's asking a lot. <laughs> right, let's see what we can do. So far, this has been the best set of the night. Or even 27, three nines would put me at, three nines would put me at 80. I mean, I, I, I at least have a fairly decent chance at breaking my 72. So maybe I should focus more on that. I think we found a break now. That's actually working out better for us. This 
Bounce one ball. Five ball, why are you doing that to me? Yeesh. Let's go for it, huh? No guts, no glory. Oh, man, why did I do that? <laughs> and I even scratched. I broke it out. Probably would have had position. Blah. Three, six, seven. So that was only a two. And so a 22. So, yeah, I could still. Uh, maybe we should play these last two racks safely. We do have a break that we can use for the remainder of the night. All right, so the interesting part is four ball is pretty much a sitting duck. Do I take it out now? That way I can just transition from the two to the five. I think that's probably the smarter play. Normally I wouldn't be caught dead taking, taking ball in hand and playing a combo. I did it too soft. <laughs> ah. I do have a foot on the floor in case anybody's wondering. Ah. Okay. Two highlight shots for the night. Kick shot and one jump shot. There she goes, you doofus. Why'd you do that? I was trying to play position for the side. I clearly should have played position for the for the corner there. This was a really bad decision. Ah, nuts. And all I would be able to get is a 71. Blah. Okay. At least we have something that we can work with. I actually have to step away for a second. So what I'm going to do is leave you all with this. And I will be right back. Just a second. There we go.
Okay, I'm back. All right, so I feel a whole lot better um, about that set. So maybe now, like I said, things just start to go, um, hopefully, um, uphill uh, from here. So let's see what I'm coming back to. We've got Kickshot Pool Gear um, in here. AJ, um, I haven't forgot about what we, uh, what we talked about. Uh, the priority tonight was just testing out my, uh, my new uh, laptop here that I'm actually uh, streaming with. Let's see, what else do we got here? Do we have any new people in here? Uh, Matt Mason, you're asking what time zone I'm in? I'm in Central Standard Time, so it's 9.48 uh, where I'm at. If that question was directed towards me. I don't think I don't think Slayer constitutes as something uh, easy uh, easy listening. And yeah, Tristan, that's what I was saying. The 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 music that I would want to have in the background would be like really low, so that way I can still just talk with my uh, normal voice. Um, that way, y'all can hear me uh, just fine. It's just that I know that when I'm totally focused on the game and I'm just not saying anything, there's just a whole lot of dead air, and I'd rather. Um, have that filled in uh, with something. Uh, Kickshot pool gear. No, my table is not refelted yet. I have new felt. Um, I've, I've said it on multiple occasions uh, that I'm, I'm going to have my table refelted. And when I do have my table refelted, I'm going to have my pockets uh, shimmed as well. I just don't know when I'm going to uh, get that done. I'm glad. I'm glad y'all actually like the. Uh, I played the intro music as intermission, as a as, as an intermission clip. I actually, now that I think about it, I need to actually create like an intermission uh, type clip uh, in case I do need to like step away for, uh, from the computer for a second. Gooper, I see. I see your. I see your message. You, I'm gonna. I'm gonna blame you. You jinxed me. That <laughs> I was gonna set a new record. I just needed to close out those last two racks, and I at least would have uh, would have beat my seventy-two. But oh well. I got I got I got another attempt in me. How long have I been streaming? I'm going on two hours right now, so I'll probably make a few more attempts. Oh, speaking of which, Tristan, I think I saw another. Is it still in here? I, th I think it's I think it's scrolled off. Didn't you uh, Didn't you send me another super chat? I just don't remember um, what the value of, of of what that was. So if, if that was you, thank you so much. Uh, Dylan Quinton, I'll I'll consider um, the cut break um, less bottom with uh, with more side spin. Um, I'm just not gonna I'm not gonna use it for the rest of the night now because of the break that I, I just figured out uh, from here uh, to um, that I'm gonna use uh, for the remainder uh, sets that I'm gonna try. Forty-five of y'all. I really do appreciate every one of y'all being here. Uh, Jared Newman, you're asking what is the difference in material with um, higher end um, and uh, lower end pool balls? Um, I think it just has really to do with the um, what's uh, what's the term I'm looking for? I think it's phenolic resin uh, that they that they make them out of, like. Let me see. Um, let's look at Aramis Pro Balls, for example. What are these made out of? Well, it doesn't say phenolic resin. It just says resin at least in this description that I'm looking at. And then like the, what are the Acros tubes made out of? Predator, or Ar Acros, Arcos. Okay. 
more accurate, more durable, more consistent. Oh, it does say, so yeah, so the, at least the Arcos are made with some sort of phenolic resin. <clears throat> and that at least allows um, them to, you know, glance, slant, uh, slash, slide off of one another uh, from, the, from the collision. You can actually tell, like, big differences um, with certain ones to where, like, um, I, uh, you saw, you should have seen uh, Alvin uh, had said earlier that um, you'll notice it more on the break. The balls will definitely spread uh, differently when you go from lower end balls to higher end balls. Um, Jimmy Beasley SR, holy crap, thank you so much uh, for the, uh, the $5 super jet. My Indiana uh, student, I do appreciate that. Um, I got to say, though, that, you know, I, I know that I am way behind on posting, like, a pool lesson um, video. The last one that I rem uh, remember doing was the one I did on math, how to do, how to perform a math day. Uh, since then, like, the, the remainder of my videos have been nothing but, like, pool coaching videos, um, APA uh, matches, a couple of challenge videos uh, here and there, and I'm trying so hard to actually catch up on all of my pool coaching videos uh, so that way I can go back to doing um, pool lessons and other types of ideas uh, that I've got for the channel. Um, Tristan, again, thank you so much for the super sticker for, for $2.99. I really do appreciate this, guys. Um, it actually just, it, it means a lot. I know that I'm not playing the best. I wish I could be playing better uh, to perform. At least the last set, I can, I can be a little bit happy about, but the 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 first ones um, were just were just uh, outright terrible. <clears throat> but yeah, the moment I get caught up with my um, pool coaching videos, I'm actually gonna uh, set them aside and not really take um, any more submissions for a while. What I am gonna do though, um, I am gonna create a Facebook group. I already have my Facebook page, um, Little Chris Pool Player. Um, I'm gonna create a Facebook group. Um, for people that want to submit videos, and it doesn't even have to be th like three racks of eight ball anymore. It could just be a rack of nine ball. It could be a rack of eight ball. You know, it could just be one rack. The idea behind the group is for the community of members that are in that group can leave comments um, on those videos as to what the player should do as far as, you know, their form, patterns, et cetera, et cetera. And of course, I would be able to do the same thing as far as leaving comments or anything. But every once in a while, what I would end up doing is grabbing one of those videos off of Facebook and actually making a pool coaching uh, video um, out of them. But that would be very seldom because the moment I start accepting submissions uh, to review, then like, you know, I, I just get overwhelmed uh, with requests, uh, requests after requests. Like, can you review my game? Can you review my game? And they just end up getting like so far behind. Like I still have submissions that go as far back as I think as November that I that I ha I just haven't been able to review yet. And I still plan on reviewing them. They're 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 going to get done. But I've said on uh, numerous um, occasions to where I just don't want my uh, I don't want to publish a review after a review after a review after a review. I want to mingle in other things in the middle of it. That's why you've been seeing APA League matches. That's why you've been seeing um, some challenge videos uh, that I've been doing just to just to try to mix it up a little bit as I try to finish all the ones that I have uh, off so that way I can finally start doing some other stuff. Tristan, I really do appreciate the uh, the monetary support uh, that you, that you're uh, that you're uh, promoting there. It, I, I will say though that it's just it is not necessary. Um, it is very very much appreciative. Okay, I am going to make another attempt. Uh, now, now, I think that's, or is it Nao Nao? I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. I did see your pattern uh, from earlier, so that is the one that I'm going to use. Uh, we have 1876934532. That is what I'm going to attempt. So let's take the break concept that I have been, that I did during this last set or the previous set, 
and let's see if we can apply it to this one and get better scores. Because the idea would be is that my sets um, get better and better as, as the night goes on. And like hopefully that, that last set was like the turning point. Six, nine, three, four, five, two. Let's see what we can do here. We want either 81 or actually 73 or an 81 and up. One or the other. Hop there. Okay. This gives me an opportunity to go for an 11. Let's see what happened there. Um, are y'all seeing? My OBS is malfunctioning. Hang on a second. I'm not seeing what I think y'all should be seeing. Oh, that's weird. Why does my camera look like it's frozen? Okay, y'all should see me right now, but... That looks frozen. That's weird. Um, just, just a second. We're now experiencing technical difficulties, folks. Let me see if I can fix this. There we go. Um, hold on a second. That look better. There we go. Okay, that sh <laughs> that should look better. That was weird. So hopefully y'all should. There we go. Okay, y'all should see me okay now. That was really weird. Really not sure what happened there, but it looked like it looked like my camera had uh, frozen up for a second. This is an attempt at, at an eleven. Gosh, that was one of the ones where you feel like you miss it after you hit it. God, I hit that so soft. I thought I hit it harder than that. Come on. Start this set off on a good note.
Okay, well, seven still isn't bad. Everything's updating appropriately. Uh, no, Monique, I haven't broken any records yet. I came pretty close on my uh, last attempt, but I, I fumbled um, on the, uh, the last two racks. And I'm still trying to score between 81 and 99 or get a 73. Like 73 through um, 80, if I can. And it was possible on the last set. Just fell a little short. But I think I finally uh, have a break that's producing consistent uh, results. On one big bounce. Oh, seven ball. Jeez, even the five ball. Right, so four to the five is going to be tricky, and then, of course, five to the six is tricky as well. Come on. Oh, okay. Just a friendly little bump. Oh, yuck. Why do I have to get straight in? Nice to have an angle so I can push to the rail. That was that was playing dangerously. That was not the smartest way to shoot that shot. But I hit that a lot harder than that. But you know what? All things considered, that was a good rack. Move this table back a little bit. It's gotten in my way on more than one occasion. I think I would have all this perfectly set up prior to going live. Okay. Whew. All right. All things considered, man, that was a rather difficult rack, but definitely well worth it. Thankfully, I have the pattern memorized. 
now? Okay. So nine and a seven, so I'm only two points behind. I score an eleven. I'll be breaking even. Oh, ball six. <laughs> wow, no balls crossed the head string, but what kind of break is this, huh? Mm, gee whiz. Now, earlier I had um, I can't remember if it was if, if it was Quinton that asked me like why am I not trying to make the the one ball in the in the side pocket um, as well as the wing ball and just play seven ball why can't I just do that <laughs> you know and make make four balls on the break with that type of spread on a on a consistent basis you know that that would just be sick wait what the heck am I coming is that is that Michigan Mike Morgan dot shoots with the with the five dollar uh, super chat? Holy crap! Thank you so much. Man, really appreciate all this tonight, guys and gals, if you're in there. Okay, let's see if we can get that break again, huh? Four, four balls on the break with an easy run out. Ball, why do you have to do that four ball? If that four ball was was free, I, w I would definitely um, would have not taken ball in hand. Gee whiz, what do I do from here? I don't even think I can go for a breakout. I think the eight ball's in my way for a breakout. If I get the breakout, I, I still might have a shot on the two ball. I have to just make sure that I avoid the eight ball when I do this. Oh, are you serious? Talk about threading the needle. Holy cow, how did I do that? Ah, oh, man. All right. Ah, let's see what we can do here. Got to do something. Oh, I put too much side spin. Am I going to scratch? Yep. So I still get that point. That's only three. If that were the nine ball, I, I don't get that. that. That point would not count. 
but man, how did I, how did I miss the breakout? I missed, I missed hitting the eight ball, and then I went between the four, five, and nine. That's ridiculous. Goes the one ball. Let me see if the two will set up for me. All right, that works out. Starting to pick up a little rhythm here. And when my shooting gets consistent, now I just need my breaks to be consistent. Then I can actually start doing stuff. Actually, I would have to disagree with that, John. I think the, the easiest 11 that I've had was the one where I made four balls on the break earlier. I had to basically do no cue ball movement uh, for that uh, for that run out. Come on, one big bounce. Ah. Tell you what's funny though is that I, I just got done uh, cleaning these balls before the the live streams uh, before I started uh, the live stream, and to see how dirty they're starting to get uh, during this time frame. Kind of funny. I hit that so soft. That was ridiculous how soft I hit that. I thought I'd made that. That was garbage. So what can I do? I can do a 77, a possible 77. I actually like this pattern, uh, this rack pattern, the way the, the balls are spreading out and the, the layouts. Oh, I didn't even make the wing ball. Six, what are you going to do? Oh, he just didn't make it. to make the wing ball on that one.
All right, so 33 puts me at 77. So 22 and 9, 31, that puts me at 75. I think that's the smarter play. I'll, I'll, I'll make, a, make an attempt at a 9 on this one. And I think the other two have to be 11s. This is not a smooth layout. I gotta come up with some tricky transitions on this one. This being the first one to get to that four on the side. Oh, and I don't even get it. Twenty two would be <laughs> would be sixty nine. Oh my goodness. Well you see that's that's always the interesting part. You saw what? Like a, a couple of breaks that were just like ridiculously easy with easy layouts, easy patterns, easy transitions, and then some of these other ones are just like as as, as hard as can be. And that's what makes that's what makes this game so interesting. Even with a even with a magic rack, you know you can get somewhat uh, consistent results um, on the break, but you know they're they're not like one hundred percent repeatable. Oh, that was the rack that you were referring to? Okay, I thought you were talking about the, the second uh, 11 that I got, John. <clears throat> oh, Jimmy, yeah, like, um, I, don't, I don't try, like, how do I say this? I certainly don't ever try to come off like I, I know what I'm doing or that I, like, I'm some great and wonderful player um, because I've never even... Everybody should have heard me say once before that I don't even consider myself to be a good pool player in comparison to what's um, actually out there, you know, in regards to like professionals and actually other people that I actually do know that uh, that are better than me. Um, the only adjective that I'm comfortable using in describing myself is I'm a decent pool player. Um, I know what I know, and I'm able to execute whatever whatever I uh, whatever I can execute. So any time that I'm not playing well, that's for me to learn because um, I'm co I'm constantly analyzing my game. I mean, just like now when I discovered a break that I just started using, because uh, I'm, I'm always very focused on what's happening on the on the table, um, trying to figure out um, the, my aims and uh, my hits, you know, to, to figure out where my where my faults are, not because of just shots that I'm missing, but because of how I'm playing position from one, one shot to the next. Um, so all of it um, is very, very humbling uh, to myself, because that's what allows me to improve. Oh, my most, I should try my most favorite pattern? I mean, I can. It doesn't mean that I'm, uh, I'm going to do well, but it's the pattern uh, that I do the most. And that's uh, one from, from top to bottom, left to right, if you're looking at the rack. It's uh, one, three, six, seven, nine, four, five, eight, two. And every ball is separated um, from one another, except, of course, the eight and the nine, because I typically rack the two ball in the back of the rack because of tournaments uh, that I've uh, played in. And as I've uh, demonstrated before, you know, with what uh, uh, Bang Time is saying right now is how this format will beat you up uh, because of that three-point rule. I showed earlier in the stream to where if I didn't worry about that three-point rule, there's a break that I can do where I will have high chances or a high number of chances at going for 11s. doesn't mean I'm going to get them, but I have high chances at being able to go for them. Uh, Monique Greer, the uh, the tuxedo versus the black, they're they're practically the same thing. The only difference is that the um, the 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 Revo that ca that came with the um, the black has a newer tip on it, um, because I have shaped um, 
the uh, Predator black tip uh, a couple of times, so it's a little bit smaller in comparison to what's on the tuxedo. So the tuxedo has a has has more of a padded hit uh, to it than uh, than the black, but uh, that's about the only difference I can say as far as how they feel when I'm actually hitting a ball. You can probably almost like hear the difference um, as well. But for the most part, uh, the the tuxedo has a 12.9 um, with a victory soft tip, and my black four five has a 12.9 with a victory soft tip. It's just that one tip is big, is bigger than the others, but the hit the hit just feels slightly different. Hey, Jimmy Beasley, I really appreciate you stopping by. You have yourself a good night. But I tell you what, we had that suggestion. I will give my my pattern a try. Uh, sure, Jim, I can send you the pattern. Uh, I mean, you're you're gonna see it uh, right now. Like I said, the me being uh, a, a numbers guy, the only reason why I like this pattern is because every ball is separated um, from one another. Like I said, so it's one three six, seven nine four, five eight two. So obviously, the eight ball is not separated from the nine ball because the only place the eight ball can be to be separated from the nine ball is in the back of the rack. But because of a lot of tournaments uh, that I played in, we typically have the two ball um, in the back of the rack. So I always do one, nine, two. But then if you look at the rest of the patterns, the three is separated from the four, the five is separated from the six, and the seven is separated from the eight. This is a typical pattern uh, that, I, that I like to try to run and practice with. And then of course, you can, sw you can switch them around. Like I can put the six and the three in the back and put the eight and the five up front. Um, I can put the six and the three in the middle. But it always it, it will typically typically be some sort of formation like this. Glad that eight ball fell. That that allowed the three point rule to be satisfied. Um, but I don't have a shot on the one ball to go for an 11. That's okay, though. Let's say we play this set a little bit more conservatively instead of aggressive. Harder than that. Failed draw shot. That was. More times than not, I'm not going to move that magic rack. But one missed shot. There we go. At least start for a nine. I've had a couple of comments uh, before on uh, some of my videos where the magic rack um, alters the path of the cue ball. And I pretty much just say, well, it plays an equal part in causing the cue ball to roll off and uh, be in a worse spot than it, uh, than it was. 
or roll off in a and put itself in a better spot. So I, to me, I just think the probability is about the same. Uh, I wouldn't see it to be any different than if there was a piece of chalk or something or something dirty on my table uh, that causes the cue ball to roll off uh, the same way. Because I've had plenty of times where the magic rack um, actually messes up my pattern because it causes the cue ball to roll off in a in a direction that I don't want it to. And then there's been a couple of times where it rolls off in a favorable direction. So it's about it's about 50-50. Come on, six. And the five ball. No, never mind. The five ball's fine. It just goes past the uh, the eight ball. Wanted to be behind the five ball, but not this much. <laughs> that was living dangerously. This is the same thing. If the nine ball was right here, I wouldn't move the magic rack. But because it's so close to touching the plastic, that's why I'm going to move it. If it was actually sitting in the middle of it, I, I, would, I wouldn't touch it at all. wrong with that. Been one of the more more positive starts I've had on a set because my, my shooting is finally starting to come alive. If I can just get my breaks to stay consistent. Oh, land land in the window. There we go. That's a little bit lucky. Let's see if I can turn this into an eleven. Where is the cue ball? All right. Whoops. It's supposed to be like right here. This little angle makes all the difference that I, I miss shot. 
man, <laughs> what to do? What do I do? What do I do? I mean, this can go all kinds of wrong if I'm not careful. Like that, for example. Get off the rail, though. Oh, that's gracious. I didn't even get decent position. All right. I got four. I guess this is okay. I was trying to draw it to the side pocket because I don't want to really have to elevate for this shot. There we go. A little bit more on the positive side here.
Oh, my goodness. Well. Play it safe. See, typically the two ball would make its way back down here, but every once in a while, um, either it doesn't make it at all or a ball keeps it up here by bumping into it. Oh, Chris, what are you doing? <laughs> if I just had more momentum on it, that would have been a nice shot. Three. What am I left with here? Ooh, a 78. I haven't really had uh, very many opportunities at 11s. Nope. Golly. I certainly would have tried it. Are you kidding me? There's a zero. I think that pretty much ruins the set. Yeah, that, that ruins the set. That zero ruins the entire set. Goodness gracious. That's two zeros I've done tonight. But, like I said, um, take any one of those rows. So, like I said, you have 1, 3, 6, um, 7, 9, 4, and then 5, 8, 2. And you can, you know, you can do 1, 6, 3, and then that would be um, 4, 9, 7, and then um, 8, 5, 2, or move one row or, you know, swap uh, rows around. Those would be uh, the, the the type of patterns that I typically practice with because it keeps every ball away from another ball with the exception of the eight ball. <clears throat> Autofocus is still on. What? It should not be. Oh, sure enough. Oh, that's because I deactivated it. Uh, when the uh, the the camera froze up um, earlier, so there, I, I I just turned it back off. <clears throat> Whew! All right, I think I got one more set left in me, but we'll do that with a um, pattern from um, from a, a viewer. 
but let's chit chat for a second. Now the autofocus was turned back on because there, there was a point during the stream where I turned off uh, the webcam and then turned it back on and I think that reset it. Uh, let me go look at it one more time. Yeah, because it's, 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 it's off now. So hopefully that, that shouldn't happen again. But like I said, these are, these are some of the growing pains that I'm learning with the, uh, the Windows computer. <clears throat> Personally, Jim, like I said, I like the three-point rule because it, it adds a layer of difficulty. Um, I, I would rather play under more difficult uh, conditions than easier conditions. Now, I don't want to play at the, at the, like, the top level uh, conditions because I'm not a top level player. But I certainly don't want to play at the, uh, you know, under the easiest of conditions. So I actually do uh, really like the, uh, the three point rule. It makes for a challenge, and I, I would rather be challenged than just uh, coming up here and, and, and banging balls around there. I already, like I said, I already showed you how that um, setting up for the one ball is actually um, not that difficult. Uh, Nicholas, uh, I think that's Desidu. Uh, you find that you don't play the cue ball into the rail as much as I do, um, and is that something that you recommend? Um, I do recommend it when it's necessary. Um, you should see most of my shots that I try to play, I'm having the cue ball come towards the shot line of the next ball and not crossing the shot line of the next ball. So the probability of me getting position is actually much higher uh, when you do that, which is why I tend to try to play more rails uh, than necessary. I'll, uh, you know, if I'm allowed to get away with one rail position, I'm more than likely going to do it. But if I see that the two rail position actually grants me the position, the better position that I actually want on the object ball, then I'm going to play the two rail position. You know, every once in a while, there there just comes a time where um, when it comes to playing position for the next ball, when you already know the shot lines of the pocket that you're going to make, the cue ball has to cross, or it has to go across, but you obviously don't want to go across it because then you lose um, the opportunity at getting position on the next ball. Uh, and that, re that requires you to play you know, with control, with finesse uh, going into there. But when you're, when you're adding in that extra rail, you can actually increase your stroke a little bit, which means you can hit it just a little bit harder because each rail basically takes off a lot of momentum off of the cue ball, giving you a higher chance at being successful at getting position on the next ball. <clears throat> but I tell y'all what, everybody, give me a pattern. I'm going to make one more attempt uh, tonight. Uh, let's see and see what I can come up with. Somebody give me a pattern. Okay, Russian Crush Gaming, I see your pattern. Not be beach to it, uh, Jim. And what's actually kind of funny is that, um, Jim, on, on your live chat, you might actually be ahead of Russian Crush uh, Gaming. Uh, but on my live chat, uh, Russian Crush uh, beats you to it. So I have one, three, five, four, nine, seven, six, eight, two. This will be for the last set of the evening. And I will chit chat with everybody for a brief moment and then call it a night. And then I'm going to go watch the, the replay of everything just to see how the audio, and I, I already heard um, about the, um, the autofocus. Hopefully I'll have that resolved for, for next time. Or eight six two six eight two. Okay. The 
but then hopefully every now and again, because I'm using a PC laptop now instead of a Mac, there's actually more stuff that I, I, I can actually do. To add to the stream. I could do it with, with my MacBook, it just requires a lot of third party software because, because of being a Mac. But on a Windows uh, computer, it's a lot more easier. Okay, okay so I'm gonna play this a little bit more conservatively. We'll go for 11s when we have opportunities for them. Let's try to let's try to end the stream on a good note, or I shouldn't say a good note. It, the the whole stream's been good, with a good score. that a lot harder than that. There we go. I always like doing those um, inside th um, inside spin three bell shots. One of my one of my most weakest shots in my arsenal, and I practice it a lot. More times than not, like I'll either make the ball and not get position, or I'll overshoot the ball because I know I'm, I'm I know I'm shooting at three rails. So I, fi I figured I have to like really try to move the cue ball. But then every once in a while, when I hit it just right, like I did there, it's just very pretty to watch the cue ball dance around the table like that. But to the question I had earlier about using rails, I mean, like, that's, that's kind of the reason why you would want to use the rails w when it's applicable. And as like I said, you can, you can really uh, let your stroke out a little bit and let, the, let each rail basically kill the momentum um, of the cue ball and actually get rather decent position. You would think more times than not. It's not like I'm I'm soft breaking either. That I, I would not really have this much problems satisfying the three point rule. I think this is actually the the worst night I've had um, with the three point rule. Usually, I'm pretty consistent at satisfying the three-point rule.
like that. Unless that nine ball falls, that's a zero. Goodness gracious. That's ridiculous. That's three zeros I've done tonight. You know what? I'm actually not going to go out like that. Let's start back over. I'm going to start hitting the crap out of these. All right. By no means am I hitting these softly. I would not expect the cue ball to be behaving like this, but enough's enough. All right, here we go. Get out of the way, four ball. Golly. How's that for satisfying the three-point rule? <laughs> Goodness gracious. Nine ball is actually sitting on the magic rack. Let's see if the magic rack budges once the nine ball moves. No, it doesn't. You know, with the, um, I've had plenty of questions about um, Magic Rack versus AccuRack. And I actually had an incident with the AccuRack when I was trying to do Dr. Dave's uh, run out drill system uh, RDS, RDS 100 challenge. And I was using the, um, I was using this one. Uh, this one right here. Because you can, you can use this one basically for all levels because it's basically an 8-ball rack, 9-ball rack, and, uh, and a 10-ball rack. And I was even using it for some of the 6-ball rack levels. But I can't remember if it was, um, if it was one of the – which 9-ball which rack I was doing because there's, there's two, like, fast rack 8-ball where you have uh, four, solids, four, four solids, four stripes in the 8-ball in the, in the or the regular 9-ball rack. And basically what happened was I broke and – I don't, I don't know how to describe it other than the balls basically gripped the Accurac and the Accurac literally like folded itself up or curled itself up in between the balls and there were like four balls kind of like just stuck here what, during one of my attempts that I was trying to record for submission. So I'm sitting there thinking to myself like, well, what do I do? Like, how do I explain this? And, or, you know, or how, do, how, do I, how do I fix it? And I ended up just uh, throwing away the entire attempt. And, you know, basically when I, when I did that, I said to myself, I wish I would have kept that footage. That way I can show everybody, like, why I typically say I like um, Magic Racks versus AccuRacks. Because th th there would have been, like, the, one of the class reasons why. Don't like breaking like this. I'm getting this. This is luck right here. I feel like I'm not even breaking with control. Don't don't give me let let alone shooting with control. I cannot believe the cue ball dragged forward like that. Um, I just 
don't feel like I have much control of my brakes. <laughs> Shooting like that. Goodness gracious. I think I'm, I'm now more in a relaxed mode and <sighs> pretty much ready to call it a night. almost want to convince myself that fatigue has settled its way in because here I was saying earlier that I found a break that we're going to use consistently and then next thing you know I'm scoring I'm scoring zeros if I get that one ball to fall like that and then Getting position on the two ball is just luck. <sighs> this is actually a difficult transition. I'm a little bit easier on myself here. And then I under hit the <laughs> Then I under hit the ball. Oh, man. Wow. Okay. Goodness gracious. You know what? We're going to start over one more time. This is my last mulligan. I just want to end the stream with a good score. Still going to be hitting the, um, hitting the heck out of the brakes, so though. That part's not changing. All well and good, but look at the two ball. I was trying to break it out. Intentional. Here's another example of using your rails. And I was able to let my stroke out. Come on, let's keep that up. That's all I want to do is keep that up.
didn't make the wing ball. Still managed to drop two balls on the break. Under hitting a lot of my shots. Man, that's what I get for trying to play position. Should have just made the ball. But I'm okay with that. Let's finish this. <laughs> Man, get the two ball to go from here to here and then back up here. That's impressive. There we go. Like I said, my my pattern play seems, or my shot making ability seems fairly consistent. The only thing that hasn't really been consistent tonight is just my breaks. So it looks like I'm gonna have to go back to spending a few hours on it, figuring out uh, where I'm going wrong. Oh, man. Yeah, so I'm just checking to see what kind of angle I would have on the three ball if I were just to pocket the two ball. And I actually want the cue ball to roll just slightly just to have a little bit more of an angle. 
That way I can use the side rail to get over here for the five ball. Oh my goodness. I guess it doesn't matter though. Three, four. can just keep that one ball from falling. That's the only thing I want different to happen. I can give you the same kind of spreads, but I'd, I'd like to see the one ball stay on the table. <laughs> well, the one ball tried to stay on the table. That was actually kind of funny. Gosh, yeah. I think I'm done for the night, guys and gals. Just not keeping it together. But we will finish this set. That actually felt pretty good. Ooh. Let's try to make these last three 11s. Because then we could still beat our own record. Four nine six. Sorry. Actually, now I'm questioning if I had, if I had the right racks uh, the entire time. So, not even sure if this set's going to count. Oh, so much for elevens. Uh, 
Okay, so at least on these uh, couple of racks here, I can do some full commentating. So when we look at the layout of the table, there's really nothing that very uh, that difficult, right? As long as I get from the four to the five, the five to the six is rather easy, and same for the eight, the eight to the nine. So the thing is, is that when I get position on this three ball, when I want to shoot it here in the side pocket. I don't want to get such an angle to where when I cut the three in, my cue ball goes this way. I mean, I can go that way, but I run a lot of risk running into the six ball if I have to come this way. But if I get the cue ball somewhere over here and shoot the three into this side pocket, then the cue ball can just drag forward, hit the side rail, and get position on the four rather easy. So that's why I have this angle that I have on the two. I can just stun over to get that angle on the three. Unless, of course, I hit it too hard but I still have the angle that I want. Because now I can cut this into the side and just roll the cue ball down onto the four. Now from the four, I can almost do whatever I want. Do I want to try to get position for the five in the side pocket? Maybe I can roll a little bit farther and play the five down here. I can even play this with some bottom right to come this way to play the five into uh, here or come all the way around. I have all four pockets that I can choose from. So there's the one rail route. So the five can go into the corner pocket here and with bottom spin I can come to the side rail and back out for position on the six. All I'm checking here is to make sure that a stun shot or a stop shot grants me position on the eight ball. So I do have a slight cut angle on the uh, six ball, so the cue ball will go to the side rail. And then I can just kind of stun off of the eight ball to play the nine in the opposite corner. Or actually, actually I'm going to push the cue ball to the rail and back and play the nine in the same pocket because that allows me to let out my stroke a little bit. Okay. For me, this was, this was a better play for me than trying to slow roll it and keep the cue ball on the other side. Maybe I should have been commentating the whole time. left? Let's see what we can do with this one. Try not to scrap. Now I'm consistently making the one ball. That's incredible. So here we try to do the same thing. It looks like the hardest transition is going to be from the six to the eight. All right, so I have to make sure that when I shoot the six in, like I have some sort of an angle that looks like this, because that allows me to use the side rail and spin back down here for position on the eight. So I can almost do, I can almost do whatever I want with this two ball to get position on the three. Try to come in between the, the six and the nine. This allows me to play a stop shot on the four ball. Now with the angle that I have on the four ball, with a little bit of bottom left, I can play the five into the same corner pocket. Oh, never mind. Then you can see the rest of the out that I would have done. 
let's just do this for educational purposes. What was it? One, two, three, four, five. That was a four. Now, as long as I get that angle that I wanted on the six ball, and this isn't it, but now I have to uh, do something a little bit different than I anticipated. And so what would I do? I think what I'd end up doing is just following this up. I think the natural angle will do it for me. Nope, never mind. I ran into the nine ball. Okay, so that was a four on that one. One more. Last one. Okay, why is that one ball dropping so consistently now? That's what it should not be doing. Let's see. Yeah, that's what it should be doing, but I still need to be able to play position for it. All right, so let's break down this rack. It actually looks like the 2 to the 3 is my key transition. Because if I get position on the 3 to go here, I can stop the cue ball for position on the 5, use the side rail to get position on the 6, and then the rack should be solved. So I think this is the, actually this is probably the most important shot here is the, is the opening shot. To make sure that I get decent position on the 2 that grants me position on the 3 ball. Yeah, so now from here I can just hold the cue ball. I'd like to get fairly straight on this six ball if I can. So I didn't really, so I'm actually going to move the cue ball a little bit, probably to play the eight ball into the same corner pocket as the six. Otherwise, I would have uh, played the eight ball into the opposite corner pocket. Here, I'm fairly straight, so I'm just going to try to draw back. And finish it off with a nine in the corner. Whew. Well. 62, at the very least. Do that and then go back to this. End the night off with a 62. At least I'm still averaging, you know, fairly high numbers. I mean, getting getting those 70s is, is not the easiest thing in the world, even, even for a player like myself. <clears throat> if I if I get my record, do y'all get tacos? Well, who, who's buying the tacos? That's what I would that's what I want to know. Hey, Todd Elston, thanks. I appreciate that. The night was just not my night, like, at all. I got to, I feel like I got to go back to the drawing board at, at figuring out, um, figuring out the break. <clears throat> Let's see, is there anything that I missed? <laughs> yeah, Rush, there wasn't enough magic left in the rack. <laughs> I 
I like it. That, that pretty much that pretty much catches me up. Uh, Chuck and uh, Heather Colling um, on uh, I have uh, twelve point nine uh, on both my um, tuxedo and my uh, predator black. Uh, this is I, I I didn't have a reason to 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 change uh, that way. Um, I don't have to really worry about adjusting uh, between cues. So like the predator black uh, four five and my and my tuxedo cue here. Um, are, are practically identical. Um, the only thing that's really different is the design, and the tip on the tuxedo is brand new. So I, I basically need to break it in a little bit. I probably need to shape it down a little bit, and it'll be pretty much exactly like the one that I have on my um, my black. Um, I just had to have that cue when when I when I saw it. <laughs> Tristan, thank you so much for the ninety nine uh, 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 super sticker. I really appreciate it. You're going, you're going, you're going nuts with the donations, man. I really do appreciate it. <clears throat> like I said, I only wish I would have been able to uh, perform uh, a little bit better, though. Ending on ending on a sixty-two, I guess, is is okay. Uh, Jim, what was the what was the winning number for the final? Was it sixty-seven? That uh, that John Grego uh, put up. And I ended up just being five, five short. Yeah, Tristan. Like I said, the um, I I have breaks uh, that I, that I've used before, but usually, yeah, sixty seven to sixty four. But usually, what I what I'm really trying to do is to get a break to where I can just go for elevens. If I just play super conservatively, smash the break, um, like you saw on these last couple of sets, and like drop two or three balls on the break, take my ball in hand, I could probably string together uh, quite a few nines. Um, if I'd have done that earlier when I was fresh and, uh, and, and not worn out, I probably could have had some better scores. But I'm really usually just trying to go for those 11s because once I, score, once I land between 81 and 99, then the only thing that really matters after that is getting a 99. And Lord knows when I would actually be able to achieve something like that because we're talking nothing but nine consecutive legit break and runs with no ball in hand. Hey, Don Parrish, thanks for stopping by. I really appreciate it. You have yourself a good night. But, you know, there's, there's, there's always hopefully something uh, that, can, that can be learned uh, from watching my live streams other than when, when, I, when I have bad nights. The last three racks that I was able to commentate um, on, hopefully you um, have an understanding about how I try to attack uh, the rack. I look for the most difficult transition um, for, the, for the pattern, and then I figure out how I'm going to get to that difficult transition to make it as easy as possible so that way I can hopefully solve the rack. Because if I just willy-nilly try to just run out and then just get to that difficult transition without really having a plan, then that's when you're really going to have to try to like almost go for a Hail Mary shot. And you don't really want shots like that to exist in your in your pattern play like at all. <clears throat> you, you know, they always say like pool is at its most boring when it's easy or when it's done easy. I can check, I can check it right now. <laughs> Hold on. There we go. There's there's that text. So if I, if I stand right here, does it look like does it look like I have a mohawk? And yeah, I'll 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 see what I can do um, about that, Jim. I I, I have um, I have plans um, uh, for Saturday night, but I'll, I'll see what I can do. <clears throat> oh my goodness! Okay, well this is um. Yeah, I'll eventually try to go for that 99. Uh, I actually have to just make sure that I put the, put the time in on my table. And in all actuality, my mini split just was not really like 
functioning uh, very well tonight because it's still hot uh, in here. Um, I'm not making any excuses, but I am actually sweating. Um, and of course, I'd rather be in a much more comfortable condition uh, when I'm playing. So, you know, I, I did the best that I could under, under the given conditions, but I wish it was a little bit more cooler uh, in my garage. But like I said, my, my mini split's not really keeping it as cool as it, as it usually does. But, you know, we'll see what I can do for, for next time. But now that I know that, um, you know, the, I got my, my new laptop all figured out, I got my new intro, I probably need to make like some sort of intermission uh, screen so that way when I, when I need to go step away from the computer, I can. Um, and uh, a couple of other things to work on uh, here for the future. Like I said, um, I'm, I'm still trying to get all caught up with my pool coaching videos um, so that I'll probably start the Facebook group before I'm done. And like I said, um, if, if you're not following me on Facebook at facebook.com slash lilchrispoolplayer, um, go ahead and uh, go there and then be on the lookout for that Facebook group that I'm going to create where you can post, you know, one rack, two racks, three racks, or whatever. Just be open uh, for constructive criticism. Um, but do know that I'm not going to allow anybody to get, uh, to get bullied. If anybody comes into that group and just starts just bashing players left and right, they'll immediately get kicked. Uh, from the group, you know that's that's not what the the group is going to be intended for. It's intended to, you know, help everybody, everybody to help each other. Uh, pretty much like how we do in our Discord community. So if you check the uh, Discord link in the description box below, we do have a Discord community uh, where we all kind of just uh, hang out. Sometimes we'll just turn on our phones and cameras and play exhibition matches against one another, playing the ghost, um, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Plus we just chit chat, we just uh, BS with one another. Uh, so it's really cool being uh, connected with people across the country um, and across the world because we do have a couple of uh, Discord uh, community members that are um, that live in Canada. So all that stuff is listed in the uh, description box below. Um, so let me say once again, thanks everybody for stopping by for tonight's stream. Hopefully next time I'll be able to perform uh, a little bit better on the next one. So be on the lookout for my next uh, YouTube video, which is going to be an APA match where I actually go up against another Super 7, uh, someone that's just as skillful as me, if not a little bit better. Uh, that hopefully should be a good uh, video for everybody to enjoy to see what the outcome of that one is going to be. And until next time, everybody, y'all have a good night and take care. <laughs>